The noise, the pollution, the smell. Welcome to another day on America's highways. For motorsports, the racetrack is a laboratory for research and development of the next big thing in the world of transportation. On a recent visit to Virginia International Raceway, imagine our surprise at what we saw when the track fell silent. And I was just looking to build a custom bike, um, a cafe racer with some sort of motor that hadn't been used. So we selected a, an electric motor and uh, for it to be a true cafe racer, it has to do the ton. It has to go over 100. And uh, on the straightaways, our bike will do about 120 plus. Brian Richardson from Highland County built this racer with the help of some corporate sponsorship as well as Virginia Tech. What I'm excited about was to build a vehicle that truly performed. Uh, this bike will scare me a little bit. And I've been riding bikes my whole life. I've never raced. But um, it's an exciting bike to ride, and that's what I wanted to build, was an electric vehicle that was exciting to ride. These vehicles are more like laptops. They're probably more familiar to what Intel or Motorola will see than anything that Honda or anybody else will see. They're, they're, they are literally, you should picture these, these things as a, as a laptop with a saddle and two wheels. That's what it is. This is how we make laptops go racing. Azar Hussein started TTXGP in 2009, a racing series solely for electric powered motorcycles. This year, TTXGP has 13 events in five different countries. Well, motorsports is, a, is, is really R&D on steroids. I mean, it's, it's, it's a round by round proving of, of pushing the technology of what works and what doesn't. It's, it's evolution on fast forward. Motorsports is, is a great way uh, when it's done properly a great way of, of igniting a, a new technology and driving that forward. So what TTHGP is doing now is creating uh, a platform for innovators. Uh, I mean here we've, we've got something like 30 teams in our championship. That's 30 different ideas of doing things. Um, there is a learning curve that people have gone through and, and we're going through all these great learning curves here at these racetracks to um, always improve the, the both the technology and the bikes to make them go faster and faster. Martin Kobler owns Super Lattice Incorporated, a company on the leading edge of battery technology. And then since the last five years, drastically, there's been a huge improvements with producing a lots of current with the same amount of weight of the batteries. So the bike basically has three components. It's got a battery box that slides into the chassis. It's got an electric motor and it has a controller that's the brains. And in some ways, it's really just that simple. Still, the biggest challenge for electric vehicles is battery life. We've also made substantial improvements with the life of the battery itself. Um, right now there's some automotive programs in place and they're trying to um, guarantee the battery packs to design for 10 years of life um, or 100,000 equivalent of miles. Probably get about 80 miles to a charge, 125 miles an hour, zero to 125 in one gear. There's no gear change, no clutch. So, the question remains, are electric vehicles the future of moving America? These teams are here putting their, their time, money, energy, effort, these and other teams around the world, and we have a growing field next year. That's a reflection of a much larger movement. I, I truly believe we can make a statement saying we can um, definitely be less dependent on, on foreign oil and um, use an alternative technology that we can actually make and build in the United States. So whether anybody likes it or not, this is coming. It's like a control or delete, right? And this is that moment, we're just rebooting. And when the thing comes alive again, there's gonna be a new range of players.